myself K Chandrababu, PGT Mass, K Indriya Vidyalaya Thane. We will be discussing now integral calculus of 12th mathematics. We have discussed in last class, in 11th class, about derivative, how to find a derivative, what are the uses, applications of derivative and so on. We have seen how to find derivative of some functions and what are the uses using derivative, we have calculated slope of a tangent, rate of a change, approximation value of a function, maximum minimum of some functions and so on. Now, the question is, if f is differentiable in an open interval i, then f dash exists. If f is differentiable, then f dash exists. The question is, if f dash exists, can we find the original function f? If we know the derivative of a function, how to find the original function that gives you the motivation to find anti-derivative, which is also known as integral or also primitive of the function. We have seen d by dx of sin x is equal to cos x. So, what should be done to this cos x to get this sin x? That means, we have to find anti derivative of cos x to find this sin x that is written as integral cos x dx is equal to sin x. That means, sin x is called anti derivative or primitive or integral of cos x. Now, we see d by dx of sin x plus 5 is cos x. That means, integral of, integral of cos x is also integral of cos x dx is also sin actually we should get sin x plus 5, but we are getting only sin x here some constant is missing that we are writing as c which is arbitrary constant and also known as constant of integration. At the outset if capital F x is the anti derivative of is the anti derivative of f x, then integral f x dx is f x plus c. That means, this f x plus c is called integral of the function f x with respect to the variable x. In this function integral f x dx, we write f x as integrand, f x is called integrand and this integral dx represents integration with respect to x, integration with respect to x and this x is also called variable of integration and this c is called constant of integration, constant of integration, where this f x is anti derivative anti derivative of f x. So, in integral f x dx, if integral f x dx is capital f x plus c, here f x is integral of f x and c is constant of integration. Integral f x dx means finding the integral of f x with respect to the variable dx and this f x is called integrand. In this way, we find integral of some functions. That means, when derivative is known, how to find the anti derivative, how to find the original function is nothing but integration. Now, in the if integral f x dx is equal to capital f x plus c, we use this integration to find unknown function when derivative is known. Also, this is used to find area of a triangle, area of a curve bounded bounded by x axis, area bounded by the curve with respect to x axis and the curve. this area represents integral a to b f x dx. We use integrals to find area bounded by the curves and the symbol integral represents sum, this sum that we will be discussing in definite integral. There are two types of integrations that we will see. So, in general integration is used to find the area bounded by the curve. Now, there are two types of integrations. One is definite integral, indefinite integral first one, indefinite integral and the other one is definite integral. 
definite integral. So, since there are so many users for this integration, we study this integration. Integration is used nowadays in science, uh, technology, engineering, uh, economics, uh, and in so many fields, integration is used. That's why it is very important. Now, let us see how to find integrations of some important functions. Now, let us see some <coughs> integral of some fun functions, and also we will recall derivatives of some functions. First, let us see d by dx of x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 is equal to x power n. That means, if you differentiate this, you will get x power n. That means, integral x power n is equal to dx is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 plus c is the constant of integration. d by dx of x square by 2 is equal to x. Therefore, integral of x dx is equal to x square by 2 x square by 2 plus c. Similarly, number 3, d by dx of log x is equal to 1 by x. Therefore, integral 1 by x dx is equal to log x plus c, but be careful we should take mod x because log of negative cannot be defined, it is understood. Now, number 4, d by dx of e power x is equal to e power x. Therefore, integral e power x dx is equal to e power x plus c. Next one, d by dx of a power x is equal to a power x into log a. Therefore, integral a power x dx is equal to a power x by log a plus c or you can see in different way also. Next number 6, d by dx of sin x, let us see trigonometric functions that is cos x. Therefore, integral cos x dx is equal to sin x plus c. Just recall the derivative of uh, cos x is minus sin x in that case. Next, number 7, d by dx of cos x is equal to minus sin x. Therefore, integral minus sin x dx is equal to cos x plus c or integral sin x is equal to minus cos x plus c. d by dx of tan x is equal to secant square x. Therefore, integral secant square x dx is equal to tan x plus c. Next one, d by dx of secant x is equal to secant x tan x. Therefore, integral secant x tan x dx is equal to secant x plus c. d by dx of minus d by dx of cosecant x is equal to minus cosecant x into cot x. Therefore, integral cosecant x into cot x dx is equal to minus cosecant x plus c. Now, 11th one, d by dx of cot x is equal to minus cosecant square x. Therefore, integral cosecant square x dx is equal to minus cot x plus c. So, like this we have uh, got the integrals of trigonometric functions. Now, let us see integrations of inverse trigonometric functions. We have seen d by dx of sin inverse x is equal to 1 by root of 1 minus x square. Therefore, integral 1 by root of 1 minus x square dx is equal to sin inverse x plus c. C is the constant of integration. Next one, d by dx of cos inverse x is equal to minus 1 by root of 1 minus x square. The difference between sin inverse and cos inverse is only minus. So, take care integral <coughs> 1 by root of 1 minus x square dx is equal to minus sin inverse x, minus cos inverse x, minus cos inverse x plus c. Next, d by dx of tan inverse x is equal to 1 by 1 plus x square, that is integral 1 by 1 plus x square dx is equal to tan inverse x plus c. Now, d by dx of cot inverse x is equal to minus 1 by 1 plus x square. Therefore, integral 1 by 1 plus x square dx is equal to minus cot inverse x plus c. 
next one d by d x of secant inverse x is equal to 1 by x into root of x square minus 1 therefore, integral 1 by x into root of x square minus 1 d x is secant inverse x plus c. Next d by d x of cosecant inverse x what is the derivative of cosecant inverse x minus 1 by x into root of x square minus 1 therefore, integral 1 by x into root of x square minus 1 d x is equal to minus cosecant inverse x plus c. So, in this way we got integrations of inverse trigonometric functions derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions and similarly we have seen integrations of some functions. In the derivative we have seen how to find a derivative function of a function. For example, we have seen d by dx of sin 2 x is equal to assume this 2 x as x if you assume this 2 x as x derivative of sin 2 x is equal to cos 2 x into 2 just recall what we have studied in derivative d by dx of sin 2 x is equal to cos 2 x into 2 2 in the same way when you calculate integral integral cos 2 x dx is equal to here also we will use function of function, but in different way integral cos 2 x is equal to sin 2 x by 2 plus c in this way we find integration. Similarly, let us see some more functions number 2 integral <coughs> secant square 3 x dx assume that this 3 x as x secant square x integral is tan x therefore, secant square 3 x is tan 3 x there we write into here we write divided by so by 3 plus c. Similarly, we have integral 1 by 2 x plus 5 dx integration of 1 by x is log x therefore, integral 1 by 2 x plus 5 is log 2 x plus 5 whole divided by 2 plus c because the derivative of 2 x plus 5 is 2 here we divide all this function by 2 and plus c this will be the integration of integral 1 by 2 x plus 5. Now, let us see what are the properties of properties of uh, indefinite indefinite integral indefinite integral number 1 integral f x plus g x d x that means, if the given integrand is given as sum of two functions then we write like this integral f x d x plus integral g x d x. If the given integrand is given as uh, sum of two functions then we write integration for each function. Similarly, if you have minus integral f x minus g x d x we can write integral f x minus integral g x d x and so on. Similarly, we have integral k f x d x if any function is multiplied by a constant k how to find integration take outside the integration as in the case of derivative and you can write it as k into integral f x d x. So, two more conditions were there in the derivative like u into v formula and u by v formula, but in the case of integration we have u into v formula also which is also known as integration by parts that we will see later. Uh, mainly these are the three properties. Let us see some integrations of some simple functions for example, first question is what is integral 3 x square plus 4 x minus 5 either you can write uh, integral for symbol for each function each term or directly also you can integrate how what is the integration of this function let us see. So, since 3 is constant you write as it is what is x square integral integration of x square is x cube by 3 plus 4 is constant right as it is integration of x x square by 2 minus integration of 5 constant is 5 x is it over no we have, we have not written the constant of integration c therefore, we must write c you may get one doubt sir why you have written only one c you have integrated three functions each one should get one constant of integration yes, but I have clubbed all the constants and at that constants I have written in one constant like that you can write actually I can write c 1 here 
plus c2 here and plus c3 here. I have merged all the constants and I have written one constant. Therefore, one constant is enough for this integration function. If you simplify, you will get this integration as x cube plus 2x square minus 5x plus c. This is the integration of first question. Now, see the second one. What is integral e power 3x minus cos 3x plus 1 and dx? What is integral e power 3x? Wait. That is e power 3x by 3. What is integration of cos 3x? Sin 3x. That is minus sin 3x by 3 integration of 1 x plus c. So, this is the integration of the second question. Third one, integration of x cube minus 1 by x square dx. If it is possible, first simplify and then find the integration. Actually, it is in the form of u by v or rational expression, but simplify so that integration will be very easy. Now, this can be written as integral x cube by x square minus 1 by x square dx. Again, this can be simplified that is equal to integral x minus 1 by x square or this can be written as x power minus 2 dx. Now, integration of x is x square by 2 minus integration of x power minus 2, x power minus 2 plus 1 by minus 2 plus 1 plus c that is x square by 2 minus of minus plus x power minus 1 and here you have got minus 1 that minus of minus has become plus that is plus overall this can be written as x square by 2 plus 1 by x plus c this is the final answer for the question. So, in this way we find integration of some simple function. Let us have one more question that is integral cosecant x into cosecant x plus cot x dx this can be written as integral cosecant square x plus cosecant x cot x dx. What is the integration of cosecant square x is minus cot x. What is the integration of cosecant x into cot x is minus cosecant x plus c. So, you have to recall all the formulas whenever it comes on function comes you have, must be able to write the integration of the function. Now, let us see one more question that is integral 1 minus x into root x dx. Actually, the given function is a product of two functions in the derivative we used to write u into v or something, but you can multiply and you can make this function very simple and you can find the integration that is integral root x is x power 1 by 2 minus x power 3 by 2 dx. I have got the point? This root x can be written as x power 1 by 2 and x power 1 into x power 1 by 2 that can be written as x power 3 by 2 that means I have expressed the function in the form of x power n. Now, it is finding the integration will be very easy. 